you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. Cat was in that position at one you point. You were the guy. Yeah. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. You fucked off promo shoots. You fucked off your promo fucking uh, trips that they had set up for you. You became a risk to the studios, which is why the studios stopped fucking with you. Why was he a risk? He chose drugs. Oh, okay. Take responsibility for what you chose and say, you know what? I got to fix me and I'm going to come back and I'm going to stand up for comedy. Mm -hmm. So when you say Tiffany Haddish doesn't deserve or isn't really a comedian and these other women have worked hard, which they have. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to Melanie Cam Camacho. Shouts out to Lou Nell. Mm -hmm. Shouts out to Leslie Jones, who are all underneath the umbrella of Cat Williams. Cat Williams, have you ever used your platform to fucking bring the people that were under you up? Mm. You haven't. So because you haven't, don't shit on those that now are. I've used my platform and I brought my guys and girls up. Mm -hmm. The brand of Captain Hart is a brand that's expanded so far, whether you like me or not, my presence of comedy will forever be felt. Because mm. I'm a fucking boss. Frustration with Captain No, um, so there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing, and it had to be one or the other of us, and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair. And couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were going to pay him $10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. Now, one person ended up with a light-skinned, ugly-faced wife that has never done a... Remember I told you that if I say that, it apply to seven people? Yeah. It's part of what they give you. Okay? I didn't get it. Luda. No, um, so there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing. And it Seven, because they refuse to join the higher ups who run the industry. Some of us are against the Illuminati, and we are against the Illuminati at our own detriment. Mm. When people are against the Illuminati, then they get punched in the face all the time. The press hates them, and nobody likes them. End quote. I mean, we all love Dave Chappelle. Exactly. Dave Chappelle has never been a part of the Illuminati. They don't want him or me or people like us. Yeah. Um, but now it's not uh, necessary for us to store up that hornet's nest unless we intend to get stung a million times. I didn't understand that. They had to sting me a million times. I'm still not going to join. But Kevin Elskett wearing a dress and fans accused him of being a sellout. The new pope is nine-year-old Oscar nominee, Kavenshene Wallace. The first African-American, the first female, and first child pope. And it's not that Kevin wasn't ever, if you ask Cat Williams, all conspiracies come from somewhere. There aren't that many conspiracy theories anymore because we found out that all conspiracy theories there's a nugget of truth in there. It came from somewhere. Mm. That's where it became a theory. And then it progressed to the point where it became a conspiracy theory mm. because there was something there. Now, when it comes to Kevin's SNL skit, Kat was actually asked to comment. What people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him. <laughs> so now we have Big Mama's house one, two and three. Yeah. I've never seen Medea in a pantsuit. I think she wears dresses. <laughs> so now I'm saying, why are we picking old poor little Kevin Hart? Because it was his turn next. Okay. And, what saying? and is that something that, you know, you wouldn't do, you know, for? for uh, Definitely haven't ran in a, to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to been challenged, so you know, I don't have to speak on them. I was asked to dribble a basketball on the talk show this morning. Like, you look said good no to that. It, <laughs> <laughs> Not that that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm gonna look stupid. You know, at the end of the day, you got to know that you're a brand. Yeah. I'm a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand, 
your your brand can be diminished and and you don't you don't want that to happen so you know protecting my brand is is definitely a priority but just a year later you, know, just, you have to have kevin doesn't have to worry about what people are going to say about him wearing a dress because of the long line of dress wearing people before him <laughs> definitely have ran in a, to put on the dress uh, i mean you know you, you have to have you have to have boundaries you have to have limits that you refuse to cross wow 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 I I don't think anyone saw this one coming. Cat Williams is finally setting the record straight on his life. I haven't seen a young comedian I don't like. If you name any of the young comedians, I'm aware of all of them and they're all doing a great job. It doesn't matter if it's Country Wayne or Desi Banks. It doesn't matter if it's Carlos or Chico. It doesn't matter if it's uh, DC or just hilarious. It, do it really doesn't it really doesn't matter once we go to the young part. Um, the young comedians are dealing with things that we never dealt with. And so that gives them more benefits, but it also gives them uh, more chances of failure. So it's not easier for them. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a big supporter of um, young comics. It was a great script when mm -hmm. I saw it in 2004. Right. Wow. In 2004. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I have it. <laughs> I'm, 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 but I'm, I'm so happy for her, though, because that's what it do. That, that that's baby, what it do. I, I tear up thinking about the break that her. she got and to see yeah. her do her thing. She, she passed 46 female Ooh. black comedians that I know personally that I put on tour hmm. who have a hard time getting a chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A after they had lined seven shows at a club for 2500 a week. But, but people so, like real, I'm, and that's why they that like what her. They, they like? They love real. Oh, because everybody's real then, so don't trip. No, no, tip, they like Wherever Tiffany Wherever you Haddish at, under the sound of my voice, real. do you have a real core worker? <laughs> right. Do you have a ratchet friend? Do you have a sister? Do you have a cousin? Do you have a nephew? Do you have a niece? Is they so ghetto? When did that become marketable? Knock it off. They like her because she want to sleep with a white man. That's that's why the only thing she said was, I want to give it to Brad Pitt. The only thing before that in the movie with me is I, I slept with this white man and I got a white baby. She had a white husband for the 14 years she'd been doing comedy and then all of a sudden divorced him. Then That so you get Kevin Hart, Lil Rail, Gerard Carmichael, all in a row. Hannibal Burris, just dudes that no woman would talk to in Lenox Mall, something? let alone you making them movie stars. Why? Because you know, ain't nobody gonna sleep with them. You only got Tiffany Haddish. She been doing comedy since she was 16. You can't tell me your favorite Tiffany Haddish joke. Why? Because she ain't done a tour yet. Mm -hmm. She ain't done a special. She has not proven the ability to tell jokes back to back for an hour to nobody. And they are already ready to down Monique and up somebody mm. who has showed them Girls Trip. Did you think she wrote Girls Trip goofball? Right. Or do you think that was already a script and they handed it to her? It, it's up to you, whatever you want to believe. I, I'm the introduction to Tiffany Haddish in the movie School Dance. The clip for School Dance has been seen more times than the movie has. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. But but the movie wow. girl the the girls trip movie. Yes, ma'am. The one with that four would... with with three of our greatest black actresses in it. Right. You mean that one? Right, right. But oh. I'm just saying, Tiffany Haddish. Ma'am, you could have Tiffany, had that role, yeah. and everything that happened would have happened unless you thought you were necessary to write the Saturday Night Live monologue. I'm a writer. I only care about what you write. I don't care about what you read. Everybody can read. That can read. This is crazy. I really want to talk about some, some, some stuff. And it's like I can't remember none of it. I just feel like whatever. <laughs> she ready. We just about to be able to, about to play some music in a minute. This is... Don't slip off. Don't slip off. Feel me?
Right, do, do the ass like you right, sir? Woo! I was woo! Get on there. Do what ass up, you ride man, you get get to Yeah, you dig dig in and he hit him in the cookie in my cook like don't eat that cookie. Slide that cookie. But a dude with a belly, he put that, that belly lock you in like a like a roller coaster ride at six flags. It's like that belly. Chip having a rough night, bro. Chip having a rough night, bro. <laughs> so it is. Going into 2019 <laughs> like this. Look, I have no idea what this brother is talking about. That joke is over 30 years old, close to 30-something years old. I did the Kings of Comedy in 1999. Probably had been doing that joke six, seven years before that. I don't even know if Cat was doing comedy then. So, you know, again, he a talented brother. I have no idea what he's talking about. I've never seen Cat do a, a space shuttle joke. So, uh, you know, there may be something that he believes is true. I've, I've written a lot of jokes. I've had a lot of comedians steal my jokes as well. So I understand if you feel, you know, slighted by that, but that's my joke. That's my joke, dog. Driving space shuttle to the moon, cigarette, cutie pie rocking in the background, parallel parking the space shuttle. It's my joke, dog. So that's when that, that's where I believe it to be. So I. But I get. Can't say you stole one of his jokes. Yeah, like I mean, it was ridiculous. You know what I mean? It was like the idea, of the joke that he was even talking about, don't even match up with no timeline. So for me, it was one of those things. Like, did you have a conversation? Did you guys sell it? Did you have a conversation with Cat? Well, I responded to him the way he responded to me. Because, but that's what I said as well. I've seen Cat, you know, even before then. Right. I've seen this guy thirty times. Like, dog, if you literally was that. Upset, upset about, about it. it, like dog. Just why kept him and say, hey, yeah, hey, why say, you say nothing? Like that don't even make sense. This is this is some internet shit, and uh, that's all I can say. So you know, when I responded to him, he didn't respond back to me, and I left it at that. Do you feel that uh, someone else has stolen some of your material? Oh, that that's a part of this business, right? Like, you know, and I think that you know sometimes it's intentional, and sometimes when it cut off, it looked like this: you flossing in a six shift converter. Space shuttle too. That's right up driving long for cars. We'll drive a space shuttle. Both of them was in a car. 